We're going to use the process that you learned of creating a perfect square trinomial to help us to solve equations that don't factorize. So, for example, solve for x by completing the square. So, we need to create, if we're going to complete the square, a perfect square trinomial. So, this expression on the left-hand side is already a trinomial, but the negative 6 on the right-hand side does not complete the square. This trinomial currently does not factorize into a perfect square binomial. So we are going to create a perfect square trinomial out of the first two terms, 2x squared plus 3x, and for now we're just going to add the 6 to both sides in order to remove it from the left-hand side. Okay, before we can complete the square, we first need to make sure that the coefficient of the squared term is positive 1. In an equation, the easiest way to do that is to simply divide through every term by 2 and we're left with x squared plus 3 over 2x is equal to positive 3. We now want to find the term that completes the square for the trinomial. So we need to take the uh, coefficient of the x term, which is 3 over 2, divide it by 2, which is the same as multiplying by a half, and square it. And if we simplify that, 3 over 2 times a half is 3 over 4 all squared, and 3 over 4 all squared is 9 over 16. So the term that completes the square here is 9 over 16. We need to add 9 over 16 to both sides. This expression on the left-hand side will now factorize because we have created a perfect square. So it will be x plus, because the middle term here is positive, the square root of 9 over 16 is 3 over 4. And on the right-hand side, we can add 3 and 9 over 16, and that gives us 57 over 16. Now that we have got our x in a bracket squared, we can solve this equation by square rooting both sides of the equation. Remember, when you square root both sides, you introduce the possibility of a positive or a negative option. So we will have x plus 3 over 4 is equal to plus or minus, the square root of 57 will stay as is, and the square root of 16 is 4. We can now subtract 3 quarters from both sides, so it will be negative 3 plus minus the root of 57 all over 4 because they share the same denominator. And we have solved for x even though this expression that we started off with didn't factorize. Okay, and whenever you are going to solve for x by completing the square, you will always be given a specific instruction to do so. So you don't need to complete the square unless the question specifically asks you to do so. Okay, there is an example in your homework book. I'd like for you to try and um, solve that question by completing the square. Okay. 3y squared minus 2y minus 5. Remember, as in the previous example, this trinomial as it stands is not a perfect square currently. So we are going to take the 3y squared and minus 2y and we are going to create a perfect square trinomial with it. So we add 5 to both sides. Before we can do that, we have to have the coefficient of the squared term as being positive 1. So we divide everything through by 3. And now we need to figure out what term we must add in in order to complete the square. So it's the coefficient of the linear term, of the middle term, divided by 2, which is the same as multiplied by a half, and squared. Negative 2 thirds multiplied by a half is, we can simplify here, 2 goes into 2 once and into 2 once. So we've got negative a third, and negative a third squared is positive 1 ninth. So we add positive 1 over 9 into both sides. We can now factorize on the left-hand side. We've created a perfect square, so it will factorize into y minus 1 over 3, all squared, and 5 over 3 plus 1 over 9 is 16 over 9. We can now square root both sides, so plus minus, and we're left with y minus a third is equal to plus minus 4 over 3. So therefore, y will be equal to the positive 4 thirds plus a third, or y will be equal to the negative 4 thirds plus a third. And if we tidy up, that gives us 5 over 3, 
or negative 3 over 3, which is equal to negative 1. So because we got rational answers at the end, it tells us that this original expression would have factorized if we had solved it by factorizing, but we were specifically told to solve by completing the square, and therefore we must show this process of completing the square.